We've had a crazy weekend here. You're right, it's been, the energy and excitement has been absolutely incredible. So Stanford Brainstorm is the world's first academic laboratory for brain health, innovation, and entrepreneurship. We had our big launch event where we brought together about 150 top leaders in medicine, business, technology, and healthcare to come together and talk about the biggest issues, opportunities, and challenges in brain health entrepreneurship. We got to have a ton of amazing entrepreneurs show us their products from virtual reality to machine learning, really exciting stuff. Exposure therapy works really well in virtual reality just because you're immersed in this other world and you look 360 degrees instead of using imaginal exposure therapy and imagine you're driving behind the wheel of a car. Yeah. You can feel that in virtual reality. Ten years ago, my mom was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's disease. She happened to have a left visual field deficit. Not only she can't see out of her eye like this, it's the left halves of her left eyes. Just put these on, right? The psychologist can actually place the patient into these immersive virtual reality scenes yeah. and work with the patient on tools and techniques and exercises to help them reduce that level of anxiety that they're feeling. So what we've been able to do with Brainstorm is bring together the medical school, business school, and engineering school, to really, which really encapsulates what Silicon Valley is all about, right? How do we bring these amazing, brilliant people together to create products and services that change the world? You know, there are so many issues and so many things that need to get done to move this field forward. How do we get people to create things? technology, yeah. ideas, business plans, so that we can write the future. So we are keeping very busy at Stanford Brainstorm. We are writing the first book for a general audience on technological innovations in mental health. And then here at Stanford, we have these brainstorming sessions, monthly meetups where we're bringing people together, not only in person, but also via video conferencing so that we can have our team, which is all over the nation, as well as people who are coming from other areas to be able to join in. And then finally, consulting. So we have an amazing amount of expertise within our team of people who have seen products and services, understand what makes them work and what those big challenges are. So we're developing an ethical consulting model so that we can consult with these entities and share our experience with them. PTSD Coach has psychoeducation, it has self-management skills, it also has an assessment tool, and it also has support. Came here to hear about the stories of the many Americans who are dealing with mental health conditions. What Wobot does is super interesting in terms of the fact it talks to you every day, it teaches you a little bit every day. Um, but I also want to mention some of the trends that we're seeing in healthcare, particularly on the healthcare provider side, that I think are particularly relevant in behavioral health. There's so much to be done, but it'll be fun, it'll be great, it'll be exciting. Put people in mildly stressful situations and then we measure their responses. We measure everything from their decision-making ability to their cognitive performance. We're trying to create quantifiable and reliable metrics to differentiate between healthy and unhealthy responses to fear. Just in the last year or two, VR has yeah. really gone mainstream more. Yeah. So the tools are cheap enough and easy enough for anyone, including psychologists, to use and to have in their office. So we want to give them the tools to help use virtual reality and exposure therapy and technology to help provide that care for the patient. So Google and Oculus and HTC and all the companies around here, there's so much innovation just happening. And An economic understanding of how these issues affect our society, as well as just a general public sentiment of it's way past time to do something about it, and we need to figure out how do we leverage technology, how do we leverage new business models to, get, to create solutions that are going to help millions of people.